So before we get into this practice question, I just want to say, for those of you who may be interested, I do have a full in-depth civil FE exam review course. So this course is broken down and organized for you by the latest civil FE exam specifications. So you will also have access to lesson notes in the course that reference the new civil FE handbook and also reference the equations through plenty of diagrams and figures. So this course also comes with full video solutions for practice examples similar to the one we're about to do. So here I go step by step. I do not skip any steps. We go slow making sure we understand each step and most importantly how to apply the FE handbook. You will also have access to flashcards making sure we understand these key terms and definitions that are likely to be on the FE exam. So this is a new course but the feedback and reviews that I've received from students so far have been great. So these are students currently enrolled in the course and these are students that have taken the course and have successfully passed their FE exam. So now let's redo this example covering equivalent force systems. So this is an example we've done in the past, but the old one has been unlisted. And this one here, we're redoing it because I made a few calculation mistakes. And also I was notified by students in the comments of a few conceptual mistakes as well. So let's make sure we understand the concept for these equivalent force systems through this example. So here we're told for the L shaped section shown below, Determine the magnitude in newtons and location in meters from point O of the equivalent resultant force required to keep the system at equilibrium. So we want to find two things, right? We want to find the magnitude of the resultant and the location of it. We'll call it X, the location X from point O. Where are we going to place this and where are we going to place it to what? to keep the system at equilibrium. So let's write that as what we want to find. So we'll say we need to find F sub R resultant in Newtons, and we want to find the distance, which is like the location X, where this is going to act, right? And it specifically says what? It's going to be the location in meter from point O. So what I'm going to do here is say from point O, it's going to be somewhere here right so we will say it's just some x distance some x where we want to place this resultant force to keep the system at equilibrium to keep it static to keep it not moving right we don't want it to move and keep it at equilibrium so we're given basically everything in the diagram here so we'll just say this is our given that whole diagram and now for the solution we will first do the quick calculation type solution. This is the one that's recommended on the actual FE. Then we'll talk about the concept a little bit to make sure we have a full grasp of the concept and understand why we're doing certain things. So what we would do first here is check for equilibrium. Check for equilibrium. And all that means is we will check for equilibrium in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction. So we will do some of the forces in the X and some of the forces in the Y and they must equal to zero because we're at equilibrium. So the first one we'll do is some of the forces in the X must equal to zero. We're checking for equilibrium along the X direction assuming everything going to the right is positive. So here, all we do is go up and take all the X forces, all the forces that act in the X direction, the horizontal direction. So you can point out a few here. We know we have this and we have this one. So we have two of these. This is actually a couple. And if you look at these, they just cancel. So if you saw that already, you don't even have to include it in the equation. This cancels this. It's just zero, right? and it's actually a couple. So these actually cancel and you don't have to include it in the equation, but I'll write it just to show us all of it. But also we have the 550 newtons will have a respective X component, right? So that one is gonna be the force in the X this way. And this is how much, how do you break that down? We take the magnitude of 550 newtons and you multiply by what? We have s small slope triangles those are given and you just take the 3 over the hypotenuse which is the 5 and no I took the 3 because it's the one in the x direction right it's the one horizontal 
and we're finding the force in the x. So that component we have to include, right? We have to include that. So let's just write everything we have. We have the 250, positive 250 newtons. Then we also have, so I took care of that one. We have this negative 250. It goes to the left, so it's going to be negative. And note how these cancel, right? So they're zero. That's why I said if you saw that, you could have not included it. But here you have the 550 times 3 over 5. It goes to the right, so it's going to be positive. So that's going to be plus 550 newtons. So 550 newtons times 3 over 5. And here we will say all of that must equal to zero. Or does it? So this is the question. We're checking for equilibrium. Let's do the math for this. So we know these cancel. And if you do 550 times 3 over 5, let me do that. You should get 330. And this is saying what? This is saying 330 newtons equals to 0. Which is not true, right? That is not true. That's not a true statement. It does not equal to 0. So what this is saying, we're not at equilibrium. Because... 330 does not equal to zero that doesn't make sense so this is not at equilibrium and then we have to ask ourselves okay how can we make this thing be at equilibrium how can we make it be at equilibrium we have to add a force right we have to add a force in the x counteracting this 330 330 newtons which goes to the right it's essentially this it's this component right so we have to put a force that goes to the opposite but in equal magnitude of 330 so what you can do here is simply say let me move this here you can say 330 newtons which is again this math is gonna be counteracted by a force that goes to the left it has to go to the left to cancel it out right so it has to go to the left so we'll say negative fx because it has to go to the left so be careful with that. That's a mistake I made, right? So now you just solve for fx. And that equals to what? When you solve for fx, you get negative. You should get negative 330. Negative 330 newtons. And that negative simply tells us it goes to the left. So it goes to the left. It makes sense because it has to cancel the positive 330. Then it keeps at equilibrium in the x direction so now you will do the same thing in the y direction some of the forces in the y equals to zero going up is positive so you just go up here and get everything in the y you have the 800 negative it goes down and these are in the x so but we have this 550 so let's get that y component let's break it down it goes up in the y vertically and this one what's that you take the magnitude of 550 newtons times what 4 over 5 4 is like the vertical over the hypotenuse so that's going to be that component in the y so then let me just take this negative 800 it's negative because it goes down then you do the positive so it's positive again this component because it goes up so 550 times 4 over 5 times 4 over 5 so we have that and we will say all of that should equal to zero or does it so when you do the math for this you do negative 800 let me do that plus 550 times 4 over 5 and you get negative 360 so that's going to be negative 360 so this is saying it's going to be negative 360 newtons equals to zero but it doesn't right this does not it doesn't make sense so it does not equal to zero. So what this says is we need 360 in the y direction that goes up to counteract the one that goes down, to counteract that negative. So what we will say is you can simply say you need a positive force in the y to counteract this, to counteract that one that goes down, that negative 360. So the force in the y would be simply positive 360. And that positive tells us it goes up. Again, it has to go up to counteract the one that goes down to keep this thing at equilibrium in the y direction. So now we found the forces that are required to keep the system at equilibrium. And to get the resultant, all you do is the Pythagorean theorem. 
So what this says is if you draw like a triangle, you have the one in the X, it's negative, so it goes down. Sorry, it's negative, so it goes to the left in the X. So this is going to be the negative 330 newtons. Then you have the one that goes up in the Y. That's going to be 360. And note, this is your FY. This is your FX. And now the resultant would be something like that. You just do a parallelogram here, which is essentially a rectangle in this case. So you get that resultant, and you just, to get that F resultant, all you do is the Pythagorean theorem. So F resultant equals to the square root of FX squared plus FY squared. So F resultant equals to the square root of FX. FX is going to be negative 330. Newton squared plus Fy. Fy is going to be 360 Newtons squared. So now for the force resultant, for that one, you should get a value. So let me do the math for that. Square root of negative 330 squared plus 360 squared. So for that one, you get 448. 488, sorry. 0.36 Newtons. So that's going to be our force resultant. So we did the first part. So now going back here, we can take these out, right? So make sure you do that on the FE. Eliminate the ones that you can eliminate, right? It's B and C. So we have two left, A and D. So which one is it? So now to solve for the second part, we have to find where this has to be located with respect to point O, right? So simply put here, all you do is take the moment about O. So on the FE, just take the moment about O. And we know where this force resultant will act is we can just say, we can place it here for now, just so we can visualize it. And that force resultant would go to the, in that quadrant. So it looks something like that. Force resultant. And it has the FY component. What's the FY component? We found the FY component to be 360. Goes up, so it's positive. And we have this component, and that component is how much? That's going to be the one that goes to the left, and it's going to be the negative 330. So negative 330. So that's where we're going to place it, and we will just take the moment about O and find the X. But remember, when you take the moment about O, you have to include all the other forces. This one, this one, this one, this one, all of them. So now, looking at this, we will take the moment about O. So let's call that step two. Take moment about O. And some of the moment about O must equal to zero. Because we want to keep the system at equilibrium. And we're going to say counterclockwise rotation caused by a force times that perpendicular distance, which is like a torque or a moment, a rotation, is going to be positive. Counterclockwise is positive. So now, let's start, for, go force by force. So the first one's going to be in the negative 800. I'll do that one. So it's going to be the negative 800. And this one hits this L shape in this manner, right? It goes down, hits it, and it causes a clockwise rotation. And that perpendicular distance, perpendicular, is going to be this distance. So it's going to be the 1.25. So the force is in the Y, the distance has to be in the X and the force is 800. So it causes a clockwise rotation, so it's going to be negative. So what you do here is force times distance, which is like a moment. So you do negative 800 newtons, and that perpendicular distance is how much? The 1.25, right? 1.25 meters. And that negative, again, is going to be for the clockwise rotation because it's negative. So now we took care of that one. Now let's proceed and do the next one. Let's do these. Let's do these forces. So this one actually causes no moment, right? This negative 330, the one in the X, the line of action hits point O. There's no distance. There's no perpendicular distance for it to actually produce a moment. So this one is actually eliminated. But we know this one does cause a moment, right? The 360 in the Y. So this one causes a moment and it goes up here. And what happens for that one, it goes up and it causes what kind of rotation about O? Picture O being fixed, allowed to rotate. Sorry, O is allowed to rotate. You hit this L shape going up this way. Picture your hand pulling it. O is about to 
al allowed to rotate, you hit it and you cause a counterclockwise rotation. So it's 360 times this perpendicular distance from here to the force, right? So for that one, it's going to be positive because it's a counterclockwise rotation. So it's positive 360 newtons. And that perpendicular distance is actually the x value we're trying to find, right? That's actually the x value we're trying to find, 2.0. 2.0 from the 360. So we took care of that, right? So let's check off what we did. We did this. We did that. So now this 250, does that cause a moment? That does it, right? Because the line of action, look at it, it goes, 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 and hits O. So it doesn't. So this one's out. So we don't even have to consider that for the moment equation. So let's keep going. The next one is going to be this 250. Don't forget, there's one here. And that does indeed cause a moment, right? So the force goes this way, and you have to picture this. It causes a clockwise rotation. So it's going to be negative. So it's going to be negative 250 times the perpendicular distance to point O, which is this one. So it's going to be the 250 times 1.5, which is the perpendicular distance. But don't forget it's negative because it causes a rotation that's going to be clockwise. So it's going to be negative 250. Let's put that here. Newtons. And you multiply that by that perpendicular distance, which is the 1.5 meters. 1.5 meters. So we're almost done. Hang in there. So the 550 that does indeed cause a moment right so it's going to be the 550 times 3 over 5 this component and it's actually the same thing as the 250 right this one is actually the same as the 250 it causes a clockwise rotation so it's negative and the perpendicular distance is 1.5 so let's put that in there so it's going to be plus 550 newtons times 3 over 5 and the perpendicular distance for that one is 1.5 meters so now I'll finish this off down here start here so we only have one more left and it's gonna be this one it's gonna be this component and that is gonna be the 550 times 4 over 5 and it goes up this way and it hits this L shape and it causes a counterclockwise rotation about 0 0.0 right so it causes a counterclockwise rotation so it's gonna be the positive right it's going to be positive and that perpendicular distance is from the line of action of the force 2.0 because we're taking the moment about oh so it's going to be this distance of 1.25 plus 1.25 so doing that let's put that in the equation remember it's going to be counterclockwise so it's positive 550 and you do 4 over 5 and you multiply by the moment arm which is 1.25 meters plus 1.25 meters 2.0 and we know here we will say all of this must equal to zero so now you have one equation one unknown and you just solve for x so when you solve for x you should get a value of 2.139 meters so this is the location where we must place that resultant force here to keep the system at equilibrium, to keep the system at equilibrium. So this X is going to be about 2.139 or 2.14 meters. So that's the location we must place this force to keep the system at equilibrium. So for the answer, you would actually take this out and this is going to be the location. This is the resultant and it should be A for this one. So this is how I would do it on the FE. So make sure you redo this, be quick with it, and be repetitive. Make sure you're just understanding how to redo this and redoing it on your own as well. But here to finish this off, I just want to talk about like the concept of an equivalent system. Think of it as having two systems, right? The original system is what we were originally given, like this system. The equivalent system that will keep this at equilibrium is going to be the system with just these forces. Think of them as the resultant forces to keep the system at equilibrium. So what you can do is draw two systems and you'll see what we mean by equivalent after we draw these. So here we have the one on the left. This is like the original system we're given. Let's call it system one. And you have the one on the right. So it should be an L shape this is going to be system two two 
So for system one, it's the original system, right? What we're originally given. We know point O's here. We know point O's here. And we know you have the 800 somewhere here. You have the 550 at an angle with the sl small slope triangles that's given. You have the 250 that goes this way. And you have the 250 that goes this way. And again, both of these make a couple, right? A couple moments. So now, that's going to be the original system. Again, that's going to be what we're given originally here. So now the equivalent system is just going to be the one that includes that resultant force, right? And that resultant force is going to act in the second quadrant, so which is like northwest, right? And we know we have the component here of 360, and you have the component here that goes to the left of how much? 330. So I'll put the negative. You don't have to put the negative because we know it acts to the left. You could have just wrote 330. But this is like the resultant. And we know that acts at some distance, right? From there. So let me put the distance down here. Some distance x, which we actually found, right? We found by taking the moment about O. So this is the original system. This is the new system. And what I'm going to tell you is this system equals to this system. This new system 2 is equivalent to system 1. And that's where that word comes from. It's an equivalent system that we developed to keep this L shape at equilibrium. To keep it static. To not make it move. And what you can do here to verify this is you can ask yourself, okay, what's the moment produced by system 1? When you do the math for that, the moment produced by system 1, all you do is take the moment about O produced by system 1 and you should actually have that already here it's just going to be simply this component this component this component and this component ignore this this is the moment produced by system 2 but the moment produced by system 1 is, is going to be this plus this plus this plus this and when you solve for that that moment you should get about negative so let me call it system one the moment you should get negative 770 newton meter and that negative tells us it's clockwise so it's going to be a clockwise rotation which makes sense why it's clockwise right it makes sense why it's clockwise because this 800 and this 550 is like acting this way right so about oh it makes sense why it's clockwise these essentially cancel right those with those with sorry they don't cancel it's a couple but it makes sense why it's clockwise because you have more of the forces acting this way so it is clockwise when you do the math for that one so that's going to be for system one so now for system two we will ask okay we need to produce that moment by system two so what you can say is since they're equivalent we put the equal sign the moment produced here has to be counteracted by the new system to keep it at equilibrium which is system two so what you do is simply take the moment about O for system 2, which is going to be the 360, and you multiply by your X, right? Which is like the perpendicular distance, about point O. Again, it's all about point O. So here you can, again, just solve for X. So you do 770 divided by 360, you get 2.14. We get the same answer. So X equals to 2.14 meters. And to summarize again, this system 2 is equivalent to system 1. And the moment where that's produced here should be this 770. And it is when you take this and plug it in here. If you take the 360 times x, you get that 770. And it would actually act in what direction though? Counterclockwise, right? It would counteract the clockwise. And I think that's all for this video. If you have questions, please let me know. Thank you.